that is Craig. We're here for another episode of the Real Life Game Changers. This is where we are scouring the globe, looking for people who have changed the game in whatever field or sense that is. And today's guest on the panel definitely has changed the game. And it's part of a game that I think a lot of people are going to be into. So before we get into the nooks and crannies of what's going to be happening this evening, I want you to just give us a comment just to let us know who you are, where you are in the world. And Oh, yeah, here we go. Game changes. Here we go. So give us a comment because we're going to be giving some special prizes out tonight. So we have a store on our website real life group.com and that store <clears throat> has loads of goodies like these hoodies these t-shirts these bands these phone cases i didn't realize i had so much stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, all kinds of hoodie uh, the winter's coming so you need a hoodie you need some good workout clothes or whatever so give it a tag uh give it give us a share by the way so let us know when you share this on your timeline and you tag at least 10 people so if you're in the real life tribe by the way you got to tag 10 people in the tribe 10 people out of the tribe that's going to make you eligible to be here at the end when we're going to pick somebody uh who's going to win uh the free item we would like someone one of our team will contact you you tell them you tell them what you can pick anything you tell them what it is that you want and uh, they will give that and send that out to you in the size that you want it. Plus, as an extra special bonus <clears throat> for the person who wins tonight, we're going to give you three months access for free for Real Life University, which, by the way, is not even open. You can't even buy this thing uh, until the 30th of September. So hit the share button, tag at least 10 people who you might think want to see it because they're going to be in for a massive treat tonight because this lady who is on here what a special person this is because i love this sentence spirituality and strategy equal success yeah uh, Jessica's on the same channel robert kiyosaki as many of you know i was on the stage of masters of wealth and he said to me all of my wealth comes from spirituality and uh, i believed him and i realized that is the same for myself and thinking about it i feel it's the same for everyone so how much wealth you've got is how much spirituality you're tapping into. But it is a little bit of a taboo subject for a lot of people. So, uh, Jessica, thank you so much for coming on this show, first of all. Welcome. You're welcome. And actually, do you know what? Just touching upon that, I think that's one thing that is really important because I think a lot of people presume that if you're spiritual, that you shouldn't have money. Or a lot of people as well, they, they can take advantage of you if you are spiritual when you have got money. So I think it's super important that yeah, when people really understand how to tap into them realms and how to actually work with their intuition, their gut instinct and being flow, your life absolutely changes. And I know mine has completely. For sure. You know, like, and I think just an easy change for, to come from my perspective is the changes, things come a lot more effortlessly. Now, we're going to touch on this a little bit later. We're going to tap into your experience and your wisdom and your expertise so you can help me on my journey to win winning Wimbledon. And by the way, in the next five years, I would like you to decode my belief so I can, they're going to invite me to the Lever Cup. I don't know if you know what the, do you know what the Lever Cup is? No, in yeah, so it's like the best players from all around the world, Team Europe against Team World. It just was this weekend. I went to London to go see it. Next year, it's in Vancouver. And uh, I, I want to be invited to that. Uh, so, so we're going to we're going to start winning some uh, some games here. So let's get into it. Let's get into it straight away. First of all, keep this uh, high. Looking forward to it. Yeah, great. Jess is incredible. Yeah, she is. Uh, and uh, we're going to share this with as many people as possible. So to do that, you've got to tag at least ten people, and then you're going to be eligible for winning three months of real life university, absolutely free, and it's not even out yet until Friday. And also, you'll be able to pick something, especially for you, nice early Christmas present. Yes, that's right. I did say Christmas. Um, I actually want to put my decorations up, but my, my partner won't let me. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, decorations. Yeah, I would like to put my de Christmas decorations up. Oh, do it. Yeah, Christmas is spiritual. Yeah, so that's what we're talking about tonight. So hit the share button and tag at least 10 people. And also let us know the, some questions. So let's get into it because you are the CEO and uh, founder of the Belief Coding and Conscious Female Entrepreneurs. Uh, we're going to open it up to males for at least this evening. 
Yeah, on the, well, to be fair, actually, conscious being entrepreneurs, that's to do with business strategy and also um, like working with spirit. So it's equally about spirituality as it is with strategy. And then belief coding, which is just absolutely just incredible, um, is transforming lives left, right and centre because we work literally with your belief systems. And you've got five children. Yes. Awesome. What are, what are their ages? Uh, so I've got an 11-year-old, 9-year-old, 8, 4 and 1. Wow, that is incredible. <laughs> Congratulations on that. One more than I have currently. Ah, oh, so, amazing. Yeah, so 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 13, 7, 4 and 1. Wow. Oh, yes, some the ages. Uh, yeah, it's strange enough. And, and we're kind of like born quite close together as well, just a few months apart. So incredible. So with over 400 facilitators around the world, you are literally creating a movement of bringing spirituality and strategy, business strategy together. So people, I think the world is ascending. You know, for those people that understand what we're talking about here, the world is ascending. And I was actually speaking, you know, with my, let's call it my spiritual crew and i was saying well, you know sometimes i'm confused about business and you know, what do i do like am i supposed to make this money or not and um she, she said to me she said like business is evolving too and it just was like that in, in that very instant it made sense to me and i was like you're right like business has to evolve as well so so first of all let's get a bit of a background on you tell us what was it like for jessica growing up and how did you get into all of this wonderful stuff that you're now aware of yeah, I think I think a lot of the time, most of us go through our childhood and like our teens and into early adulthood, and we believe that nothing has happened to us, nothing bad, or even when we have quite big trauma, we still don't really associate big trauma with things that are actually traumatic. And I think like most people, um, I grew up with, you know, I had quite a bit of early childhood trauma. And then as I've sort of gone through my life, a lot of stuff that happened from a, an early age, literally filtered into my life and I was completely unaware of the things that had happened to me, how they were affecting my day to day. But in general, I thought I had a very good upbringing. And then it's only really since doing belief coding when you realize how much stuff has actually affected you and how much of your past experiences literally create limitations on your current situations, which stop you from manifesting. They stop you from stepping into your power. They literally stop everything yeah for sure and um <clears throat> so i i want to just pick out you know you had some trauma but from all of the people thousands of people all over the world that i come across you know on this journey of helping and you know and seeking to discover the true potential they're all like either someone was just had nothing to lose back against the wall or there was something that really shifted them either a trauma, a life, you know, what's it called? Near death experience. That's right. Like a near death experience or something, which I since learned made them big, you know, like their spirit expanded. Some people call it out of body experience. You know, they see the light at the end of the tunnel, like whatever it, you know, their version of that was, you know, is that something that happened for you or is that? So I'm guessing you've nuts in my story. Um, so when I was younger, I actually, I was abused as a child from four to eight. And then a few years ago, I lost, uh, my three girls lost their father to suicide. And then shortly after I had a miscarriage. So everything literally came to, well, it came, went through the dark night of the soul. And that's when everything started to change. That's when I started to tap into, uh, well, tap more into my spirituality. That's when I really started to do, to have to fully trust in the universe, have to fully trust into God. Um, and that's when I really did a lot of my healing just to make sure my kids weren't going to be messed up. But from making sure that my children weren't messed up, that also really aided in my own help um, and my own healing. And then from that, that's when Belief Coding was born. Wow. And now we're talking. So tell us business, spirituality. How do people get them to work together? Because people either think, we were just discussing before, people either think I'm either spiritual or I'm rich. I can either be like giving and kind of like good for humanity or I can create a lot of success. <clears throat> they don't see them together. So how, how do they come together? So I think the main thing is you can't give from an empty cup. So, you know, you can have the best intentions in the world, but if you have um, like no energy, no time, no money, you're not able to help people to their full extent. And I know from my own experience, 
Um, when I used to have, well, when I was working in business and my business wasn't making much money, I was constantly stressed, constantly having to like look after my children, wondering when the next sort of like paycheck was coming. And it was only really when I started making really decent money was I able to give more, give back, uh, give to charities, help people who needed helping. Um, and I think, I think once you understand that actually life is supposed to be enjoyable, life isn't supposed to be this. It's, it's just not supposed to be hard work. It's supposed to be enjoyable. You're supposed to thrive in life. And it's, you know, conditioning and programming that we're subdued to all through our life, from school, from work, from everything that suppresses, you know, your, your real innate power to actually be able to manifest and do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and I think once you start tapping into your intuition and trusting yourself and going after things that create your passion, you'll always make money. Mm. So, but how do people get the belief? Because, like, if you just tell them that, oh, you know, you just trust and belief. But how do, like, what do people do? Because it's your lack of, it's your experiences that have created the lack of trust and the lack of belief. And all our experiences, every time you believe something about yourself, you don't believe something about yourself. That's your subconscious trying to keep you safe, trying to keep you in familiar grounds. So, what your subconscious does, it fulfills out the beliefs that you have. Whereas, if you were able to find out, and again, this is what belief coding does. When you're able to find out what created that limitation, you heal the experience that created the limitation, and then you have a newfound belief. You can mm -hmm. you can literally any single person listening to this podcast can transform their life beyond belief. And even if they're thinking, you know, this won't work for me, I'm unhelpable, you know, nothing ever works, that is also a belief. And your subconscious will fulfill every single belief that you have. Mm. so like uh the subconscious like but 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 it wasn't like pre-programmed was it everything's pre-programmed <laughs> no but, but like so, so well it was pre-programmed before or like something happened to co create the programming from the day you are born your subconscious is creating programs to keep you safe and in familiar settings every single day whatever you experience is navigating your safety to keep you in your comfort zones because primarily your subconscious is there to make sure you don't get in danger and if we look back to when i don't know, like the caveman days for example you know you'd feel that fear but that fear would be because you're being chased by a tiger so every time you feel that fear it would stop you from going in similar ground so now every time you feel an anxiety or every time you feel a panic or a worry it's to stop you from doing stuff so my indication of when i know i should be doing something which is going to help me grow is when I feel that fear. And when I feel scared to do something, that's when I absolutely know I have to do it because that's where the cusp of my comfort zone is. And beyond my comfort zone is, well, my life has transformed beyond belief in the past 12 months. It's unrecognizable. And that's literally just from transforming my beliefs. So where's the fine line between I'm scared to do it because it's like what you're explaining uh, or I'm scared to do it because it's dangerous. Well, I think, I mean, obviously, like, like jumping in front of a car is dangerous, and I'd be scared to do that, but I know what the consequences are. Whereas investing money into a business, you know, investing my time into an individual, even though it might feel scary, you know, getting into a relationship, you know, sending your kids to school, those things feel scary, but you know there's growth beyond them. But what about, because a lot of our listeners uh, and viewers, they're like into business or they're into property investing. So let's say, like, I've got, um, you know, a deal that I want to do in property and I have to rely on, oh, is the value of that property going to be 22 million in two years time when I finished it? Like, is that then, you know, like the fear of, oh, is it going to be worth it? Is the market going to take a crash if the strategy is to sell? That could always happen. So again, like I'll put an example. So my next launch in the next two weeks, well, the over the next three weeks, I'm going to be investing 150 grand into Facebook law, into Facebook ads. That absolutely makes me want to shit myself. I am so fucking scared of spending that money. But I also know, you know, Facebook could go down, <laughs> the internet could go off, this blackout could happen, all of these things could happen. And they might happen, but they might not happen. So you can choose to live your life in this fear of, you know, what if this, what if that? Or you can choose to have faith that everything will work out. And that is where that spiritual element comes to. It's choosing faith over fear. And if it all goes wrong, that's your perception. Okay, so like, 
like is it only like let's say like somebody was to do a deal and like they go they go bankrupt because of it is is that then only their perception that that's a bad it's thing bankrupt, but also as well again i think if you're you're looking at it from a very literal point of view Whereas when you look at bankruptcy, some people perceive that as the worst thing that could ever happen. However, from the worst things that ever happen in your life, you also have exceptional growth from a spiritual level. And I truly believe everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. I've been in a situation where I've had a business, like, I don't know, eight years ago, where it was making a grand, two grand a day. And at the time, I viewed that as a hell of a lot of money. And then I lost it. I had to start from scratch. I thought it was the worst thing ever. At the same time, our relationship broke down. I had to move back in my mom. I became a single mom with three children living on benefits. At the time, it was the worst thing ever. But now, I do regular six-figure months. I'm going for my first touch wood, six, seven-figure month. And my life is just, inc I love my life. But I had to have that happen. I had to go through that. And I think, unless you go through stuff, you never know how far you can go. You never know what grit you have. You don't know what drive you have. You don't know what determination you have, unless you go through stuff. Hmm. But then, so then it will come down to someone's perception of like, have I really gone through like those type of situations? Because a lot know, but it's, everything is perception, isn't it? Everything like we could have the same experience and you could perceive it as bad and I could perceive it as good or the other way around. It's how you choose to experience everything in this life. You can choose to have your cup half full or you can choose to have it half empty. Yeah, so like, I just, I just want to ask the questions that probably a lot of people they don't want to ask because they don't want to go there. Yeah, so is that okay? <laughs> <Ask him. laughs> yeah. So let's just stick on this bankruptcy. Will anyone ever sit there and like having to go bankrupt and say this is awesome? Well, no, they won't at the time. Well, of course they won't because if you have to go bankrupt at the time, you're losing everything. But again, when you're in that moment, you can choose to see the light or stay in the darkness. And if you stay in the darkness, you end up bitter, resentful, and you never pull yourself out. Whereas there is always a positive, always, that you can search for, but it has to be the individual's choice. Mm, love it. So what about, so is there a way that we don't go into that darkness? We could just, I always draw Yeah, this, belief coding, that's the way. <laughs> I always draw this picture. Let me just quickly do this, yeah. Uh, let me just see if I've got a piece of paper here. Uh, I need it to be a blank piece. Yeah, this will do. Yeah, so I always draw this picture. And I'm just wondering, you know, like, so like most people, they start here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this person. Yeah. Huh? So they're loving the picture. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a photograph, isn't it? Yeah. And they want to get, and they want to get, the and they want to get to winning. Yeah. Up here. Yeah. They want to they get to winning. Yeah. So normally, path, you know, is going to be something like that. The problem is most people, I know, yeah. They, they have to come down here first. So, do you know what? Years ago, I would have believed that. Years ago, I would have been like, yeah, you're totally right. Now, no. We are conditioned to believe that you have to work hard for your money. We are conditioned to believe that everything has to be hard work. It doesn't. I work two days a week with five children and two businesses. I absolutely bloody love what I do. When I go to work, I'm focused. I get shit done. It's not hard. I get it done. Whereas before, when I used to believe work had to be hard, oh my God, I put myself in situations where I'm trying to design stuff when I'm not really a designer, trying to do absolute living, build a website when I'm not a web designer, even though I had the money to do it, because I believed it had to be hard work, my subconscious yeah. fulfilled that belief. Whereas now, and again, like when we talk about that entrepreneurial roller coaster where you're up, you're down, you're roundabout, touch wood, I've not had that for about 18 months to two years. And bearing in mind, stuff has happened where I could have gone down, but I don't feel that up and down, up and down, up and down. Everything feels easier and in flow. Beautiful. So what we're saying is, rather than, so I'm here and I want to go up here, rather than coming down here first, we, you're saying the distance, and when I went to school, I'm pretty sure that this is how it worked. The distance from here to here is much shorter than the distance from here yeah, to but here. The when you're at the bottom the drive is much quicker so you can have a slow car when you're halfway up and the journey doesn't take uh, the journey takes sorry 10 times longer because again you've got nothing to lose you've got nothing to fight you've got no drive in you whereas when you hit rock bottom you don't want to be at rock bottom for long you get in a fucking rocket and you rise so, so are you saying it's better to drop down here you're saying it's better to drop down here 
I think when you drop down there, I don't know if it's better or worse because I've only been down there. Whereas I know before my memories came back of childhood sexual abuse, that gave me no drive. I know when, before my ex-partner died, again, I was plodding along. Whereas when these traumatic experiences happen, you have to do something about it. You can't stay stagnant. You have to, you have to move. Whereas when you are moving slowly, it's because you're comfortable in life. Whereas when you think, I want to get the fuck out of here, like I said, you get in that rocket and you fly. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I see merits in the whole back to the wall and I've been there as well. Uh, but I also now, and I think what you're saying is the same thing, is I see merit of like, well, I'm here and it's quicker just to go from here to here <laughs> than it yes, is. That is. Yeah, sorry, if you're already there. But again, it's how much drive have you got? Like I thought you were talking about if you were at school and you're there. Whereas a lot of people, like, if you think back to people at your school, are they, who are the most successful ones? Are they one that have had adversities in their life? Are they the ones that have had nothing? Are they, one, are they the ones that have had that driving factor? Are they the ones that have had to feed the kids? You know, who are the people? Like, you've interviewed these real-life game changers. What is their background? Have they been plodder alongers? I'm assuming no. The, the common thing is the people who are most disciplined. And, and I think Absolutely. when people have had some at rock bottom, yeah, they become more disciplined. Yeah, or like they've had to overcome something in life. So, you, so you're so you're absolutely right with that. Um, so now my question is, do you see things changing? As in, maybe before people had to hit rock bottom because it was like, uh, I've got to be in a, a no, uh, well, nothing to lose situation. And what that creates is, um, what's it called? What am I looking for? I, I, mean, I don't think we have to be, no, I don't think people do have to hit rock bottom to fly, but people need to release their limitations to fly. Yeah, that's what, it. I got it now. So what I was going to ask you is, is it a case of like, that whole thing is like a pain getting people to move because they want to move away from the pain. Have you seen a change that actually, rather than just having pain and moving away from it, that now people, because you said drive, right? How much drive? Is there, do you see more often there's a drive to move away from the pain or towards the pleasure? I think it completely depends. I think it's from the work that I do with like using belief coding, we'll have people who've never, or what they perceive as not, nothing traumatic happened in their life. However, they're in that place of where they feel uncomfortable, they feel stuck, they feel lost, they don't really know how to move forward, uh, but they've had no, what we would call, big trauma happen. Um, however, you know, things that have affected them, that have created those limiting beliefs of, I'm not good enough, I can't achieve this, will have been a teacher making them feel stupid at school 30 years ago, and it's created that limitation. So in order to get to where you want to be, to that winning status, we all have blocks that we all have to overcome. Like I want to bloody, like my, my next financial goal is to have my first seven figure month. You know, whether or not I'll do it, I don't have a clue. But hence my belief systems from doing this work have completely transformed, which make me feel more confident investing more money into stuff. Mm -hmm. But is that your way of being, is that your way of not being attached to it by saying, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. I don't have a clue. I is don't that know, I hundred percent know I'm going to do a seven figure month, but I don't know whether it's going to be October. I feel like it's going to be October because of the money that I've put in, the strategy that I've created. Uh, my guides have told me the, the amount of money to invest, which again, I'm shitting myself. So I know that is, I know that will happen. Um, and again, it's my limitations have come from, you know, not feeling worthy of success. Whereas I wasn't even aware that I had that belief. You know, another one came from thinking that if I earned too much money, my partner would leave me and I'd be left at home with the babies. I was unaware I had that belief. So a lot of us have these subconscious beliefs that we have no clue about, but they stop us from getting to exactly where it is that we want to be. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, look, here's Katie. It will be October. Yeah. It will be October. Yeah. <clears throat> so, okay, so you literally you're saying it's as simple as there's some beliefs that you've got that are pre-programmed, they're sitting in your subconscious and they're stopping you making the move that you're supposed to do. And when that kind of move that you're going to make appears or the opportunity appears like people are just like oh no i don't want to do it because of some past programming that's exactly what i'm saying so yeah. you don't make so you don't take action when you feel anxious panic worry fear most people don't or when they don't truly believe that they can have what it is that they want so if you knew for certain say that you were going to win wimbledon and you knew that hands on heart you knew in your core with absolute certainty with unwaverable faith 
you will turn up different tomorrow to that tennis lesson. Whereas if there's a part of you that does not believe it, you're going to turn up again different to that tennis lesson because you're never going to put that 110% effort in to actually winning it. Because then it, you don't go on. No, go and finish. Because if you, if you don't win it, then you've got the excuse. And again, I'll give you, what, what was another one? So basically when I did my launch in February, today I did like 15 grand on Facebook ads and I had over a thousand people online. And then I started to really panic and fear thinking, oh my God, there's too many people online. No one's going to sign up. No one's going to sign up. And then that next day I made myself poorly, like subconsciously. I just woke up thinking, God, I feel terrible. Did belief coding. I figured out I'd made myself consciously poorly. So then I had an excuse if nobody signed up. Oh, I'm poorly. It don't matter. No one signed up. This is magic. And i tell you a reason why is, um, you know, before, like I started having these, I don't know, it wasn't thoughts because like I, I wouldn't think before I spoke. When people would say I was poorly, I would literally just say, you know, I mean, you did that yourself because yeah. you, you know, or you had, and I started to experience it myself. Like, you know, I have quite a vigorous uh, morning routine where I get up at 4 a.m. and, you know, do loads of different stuff. But like previously, my brain used to be like, oh, you've got a headache, you need more sleep, go back to sleep. You know, so then like I would burn through it and I'd be like, headache's gone. Like what headache? There was no headache. You know, and it's because my mind says, I know how to stop you. And also, if you think about it, I would imagine that those headaches started when you around about the time when you started getting really good at your morning routine because you're stepping out of your comfort zone. So then it's becoming like familiar, but it's not comfortable. So then your subconscious does something to keep you back in your comfort zones, but you powered through it. Whereas most people wouldn't. Most people would stay in bed with a headache because it's their subconscious keeping them in that zone of comfort, that familiarity, which they know they can survive in. Mm. And I think I found something super special for me, and I recommend it to everybody, and there's probably a few people out there doing it, yeah, which is um, I got this pool outside, and now it's just getting to winter again. Now the real test starts again, like it did last year, is I used to just go under the cold hose pipe outside. But then I set the pool up one summer, a couple of summers ago, and we just kept it out all year round. And uh, I just go in that and the ice, ice bath, it's about 5 a.m. by the time I, no, it's probably about 5.30 by the time I go in there. And now it's starting to get dark again. So like in, this, in, this, in the summer when it's light and there's beautiful scenery, I'm like, hey, yeah, this is cool, you know, not a problem. And then when it starts to get, last year, I had this, uh, I had a heart operation when I was 11. Yeah, so open heart surgery and the valve, they needed to replace it for years. Well, I was leaking, it's leaking. And one time, at the end of 2021 they called me and they said by the way we're ready for you to come in for your operation i'm like what that's like yeah well we've got a space on tuesday this was like the week before i'm thinking i was planned in my diary i said we need to book it plus my son was uh in hospital still so anyway we scheduled it for february but the moment they made that call when i was going into the cold bath i was like going dizzy as if i'm going to faint and i'm like i don't want to drown here 5 30 in the morning by myself and and i thought like is that real or is it just in my head because now i know that oh it's time to do the operation to like because you have to they're only supposed to last like 15 years 10 15 years but this lasted 23 years this bout you know, wow. so it, was, it was already way past the four minute mile they gave me you know so, so like i was like is this real or am i just now thinking that and now my body's making me anxious feel sick or whatever because it's survival mode isn't it yeah so like so so what so if i was to bring that uh, you know like if i was your client i'd bring that to you like how, how would you address that so what to get rid of the anxiety and the feelings well or... like, first of all could we say that that's what it is or like genuinely no there's <laughs> something physically happening in your body so again like my belief is and just from things that we've experienced in the belief coding community We've had people, once they've healed their past experiences and their traumas, they've completely come over chronic illness, like chronic disease, Crohn's disease. We've had people that have done belief coding sessions, they've released trauma and they've like they've gone, they've had tumors. Then when they've gone for the checkup, the tumors haven't been there. We've had ladies who've had cysts on their ovaries, they've worked on the emotions attached to those cysts. They haven't had any cysts. Like your beliefs and your experiences create situations in your body to make you aware of the things that are stopping you and um, so one thing we would do you would come as a belief coding session you could come with your heart valve for example and you could find out if there's any trapped emotions in there it might even take us back to a past life um everything everything 
from my own experience and from what I've witnessed and seen the facilitators who've gone on to do sessions have witnessed would suggest everything is to do with your belief systems and what it what manifests in the body. So for example, your left side of the body and the right side of the body, anything that goes on the left side generally stems from an issue which is in your past or in a past life. And anything which happens in the right side of your body is in, in now um, it, something that's happening in the now moment, which is stopping you. So for example, <laughs> I burnt on my hand, uh, my right hand uh, on a retreat and it was the same, it was the last week. And my daughter had just started high school so I was like, right, I burnt my hand. I was like, what the fuck does this mean? I was like, right, how is it making me feel? All right, it's making me feel really sad and like I want to cry. I was like, right, okay then. I was like, what else does this mean? It means that you're trying to hold on to something that you can't hold on to. So it made perfect sense that actually I'm trying to hold on and make sure I'm trying to get control of my daughter having a great year seven, first year in high school. But I can't, it's out of my control. But I'm trying everything. So I believe spirit had guided me to have that bloody accident with my hand um, to, to literally release all the emotions that I'm holding on to. As soon as I left that retreat, the pain went from my hand. Now, if anyone is on, I know I've seen a few of the bleep coders who were in that retreat, my hand was agonizing for the full eight hours of the day. As soon as I left that room, the pain went because I released the emotions attached to the situation with my daughter. Nice. I totally relate to that because afterwards I... I I kind of went back to this whole uh, water, this cold water thing and was going back in it after six weeks after the operation and stuff. And I was like, come on, like, you know, that can't be why now I feel fine with it. It must be in my head. And somebody, I can't remember it is now, someone's just said in the comments that cold therapy is really good for the mindset. Now, a lot of people, they ask me, like, why do you do it? Is it because of, you know, inflammation and all this good stuff to do with the physical body yes i believe the physical body is great but i tell you the biggest benefit i get from doing it is the mind because every day my mind comes up with these different stories of why not to do it why it's no point stop doing it now get out nobody will know you know like all of this crazy stuff and uh yeah it's just incredible so yeah what you're saying is making lots of sense and i'm and i'm thinking hey how many more people need to hear this so i'm going to just say for these people that are on here now do tap if you want to be in a chance of winning i'm not even sure if anyone is qualifying as of yet you've got to share this on your timeline and uh, tag at least 10 people in it yeah and then we're going to be giving you three months of real life university as well as uh, some free merchandise that you might want some clothing some cups and whatever else is on there <laughs> Yeah, so uh, do go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll make sure that yes uses her guides to select to the right person who needs to receive <laughs> some of this stuff. Yeah, so I want to do some quick fire questions. So if anyone's got any questions, any people watching on here, uh, yeah, good. There's some people I can see some bit people from Camp Jessica, and there's also people from Camp Real Life here. So this is great. Good, we're mixing here. We're mixing, yeah, and uh, bring this culture to life. So any questions that you've got, quick fire questions for Jessica, please get them in here because we're going to do it. Until then, I'm going to make sure that she's uh, being utilised to to have this. So like, I just want to quick fire some things. Yeah. What, like, what, what are some of the easiest steps that someone can make? uh to get over this whole spirit you know i mean the spiritual or i can make money so again i think that's a belief <laughs> so when you figure out where the belief comes from they'll get over it and generally if they set that intention of okay so why do i think you have to be spiritual or business minded if they set the intention to find out their subconscious will start giving them memories to work with to why they think that mm. now i want to ask you like what steps can i take to make sure I win Wimbledon next year. By the way, I'm at the age of 35. Yeah, which by the way is classed as a veteran in this in, the, in this sport. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know anything about technical. I, I had my first coaching session, and he hit some, and I was li literally returning everything. So I'm pretty athletic. I can get around the court. He stopped me and he says, "Hmm, it's clear you haven't had any coaching. You have zero technique." You know, so that's where I started from in August 2022. Okay. The the competition is only 128 people in the entire world that will play at this competition. There is 104 people that get seeded through international rankings. There's 16 people who go through qualifying and eight wild cards. Yeah, what can I do to make sure I get there next year and win? 
Well, so the first thing you would do, you would acknowledge to see if there's any part of you that doesn't believe that you're going to win. The second thing is, once you set that intention of I'm going to win Wimbledon, you would then acknowledge the thoughts, the feelings, anything that starts to come up because your subconscious will give you clues to what is going to stop you from winning that. So my assumption would be there's going to be lots of conditioning around you actually winning that intention. So you would have to acknowledge absolutely every single uh, thought that came up, every single experience, the random memories that came up. And then once you start to heal the random memories, you'll gently be able to remove the limitations and the subconscious blocks to stop you winning. So once you fully know and believe that you will win Wimbledon, you will find yourself getting up earlier to coach quicker. You'll find yourself doing things different to get you in that prime position to actually win it. Nice. I believe you could be in with a chance of winning it if you change your belief systems. Good, good, good. So you want to help me win Wimbledon? <laughs> no. <laughs> you okay. don't? No, I'm sorry. Huh? <laughs> I'm too busy. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's just your belief system. Your right, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, um, so does it help if, you know, like, you talk about left side and right side, you know, the left side of the brain is all like analytical. Does it help satisfy that if you can find statistics that say, well, yeah, surely if that happened, then this can happen. Does that help? Yeah. Can. So one thing you can do using belief coding, if you found those statistics, so let me actually, let me rewind. Some people can read statistics and not really embody them. Whereas if you read statistics that are in your favor, you could actually code in those statistics. So I'll give you an example. I started getting some wrinkles here on my forehead. And then I was like, fucking hell, I'm starting to look old now. Anyway, I've not had Botox or anything done, but I decided to belief code my wrinkles. So when I believe coded them, I found out that my body was creating aging because it wasn't safe for me to be attractive, for me to, to look younger, because if it was, I'd get taken advantage of. Um, and this stemmed from an experience that happened when I was in Ibiza on a beach where I was taken advantage of. So knowing what I know about the body, about collagen, about re like re reproduction, about looking younger, I coded in that every day my body produces more and more collagen and every day I'm looking younger and younger and a few of the scientific things around aging. So now my grey hairs have started getting the pigmentation back in the hair. And again, you can ask some of the belief coders. My lines on my forehead have started to plump out. So this is because I know the science of what happens within your body to do with collagen but also I've got the belief systems that match. But then if we look at that every day, I'm looking younger and younger, I'm starting to eat different. I'm starting to drink more water, but subconsciously, because that program has been created. Mm, that's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, so it looks like we've got a question here somewhere from a John Mackin. How can I identif uh, identify the belief system that's holding me back? And how do I know what experience it has come from so that I can heal it and move on? That's a great question. So... I'll tell you what you can do, actually. For anybody who's watching this, I've actually got my, my next free workshop on the set at the 18th, 19th, and 20th of October, where literally I will walk you through my process and you will have a shift. And it shows you how to identify the things that are stopping you. And we code in surface level beliefs. Obviously, we can't go really deep because, you know, there's going to be a few hundred people to a thousand people, well, a couple of thousand, actually, the amount of money I'm spending um, online. So we don't want you to go too deep, but we want you to experience those transformations and you'll be able to acknowledge where things come from. Nice. So, like, just, uh, you know, listening to that answer and seeing what another Jessica on here is putting in the comments, you know, the, the muscles reacting. Yeah. And yeah, we, we do lots of training around this, even in property investing, which is unheard of because everyone thinks property investing is just like a PowerPoint presentation. But mm -hmm. like, if you don't believe you can do it, you're not going to make no calls. Well, like people will make the calls, but their belief is, oh, it's scary. It's responsibility. Yeah. I won't raise the money. So they'll just never get the deal. Or then someone else is like, I'm going to make this happen. And they do it. Yeah. So just all thinking about all of that, uh, like the, uh, the other week I was, I had someone on here and, and we said, okay, the, the question is, can this body get to a place where it can swing the racket, it can hit the ball, it can move around the court as good, if not better, than any other tennis player on this planet? Could it do that within a year? Is it, what, Are you, you asking me a question? Yeah, I mean, that was a question. Oh, right, yeah. So again, so if you stand up now, so you can actually test that this is what, and actually anyone who's watching, so this is how you know if you have any subconscious blocks. So if I say, my name is Jess Cunningham, I'm going to go yes. If I say, my name is Mark Harvey, no. Then if I say, yes, 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 no, 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 no. 
So your body will naturally react to a truth and a place. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to go forward or back. It doesn't matter. So if you just sit, but you've got to be open to it. If you're closed off, you won't move. If you're open to it, you will definitely move and you'll think you're doing it to yourself, but you're not. So what so do I need to say? So literally relax your body, just take a deep breath in and then just gently gaze down and then just say, just repeat after me, I'm open. I'm open. To having a really strong response for yes. To having a really strong response to yes. And a really strong response for no. And a really strong response for no. And are you open to seeing if your body will give you a yes or no answer, Mark? Yes. Okay, so just say, my name is Mark Carvey. My name is Mark Carvey. <laughs> okay, that's it. My name is Jess Cunningham. <laughs> my name is Jessica Cunningham. <laughs> okay. I'll just say yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Am I actually well, moving? Am I moving? Can you move it forward and backward? I so feel like I'm moving, but then I wasn't sure. <laughs> no, you are. So now what I want you to do, I want you to ask, is there anything stopping me from winning Wimbledon? Is there anything stopping me winning Wimbledon? <laughs> yeah. So just ask if there's core beliefs that are stopping you from winning Wimbledon. Is there core beliefs stopping me winning Wimbledon? Yeah. So what we do with belief coding, we're able to find out exactly what those core beliefs are and re reframe them. So you have the beliefs of, I'm going to win Wimbledon. And yeah. if you know win Wimbledon I, can, I guarantee you will do the things to make you win Wimbledon okay so is there anything else I can ask so what we'd do we'd ask if I mean this is going in, into the process but we'd ask if there's trapped emotions to stop that or even now any random memories coming up so could I so could I ask is it possible to win Wimbledon just say am I capable it's got to be your words but just say am I capable Physically, so am I physically capable? Because you know physically if you are or not. So am I capable physically of winning Wimbledon? Am I capable physically of winning Wimbledon? Yes. yes. Okay. Let so me in my mind. So I just got to fix my mind, and I'm going to win. Ask it. Slash your body. Just say, is it in my? Do I have to just, like, overcome mental limitations? But I know the answer is yes anyway. Uh, so what was the question? Uh, so are there mental limitations I need to overcome? Are there mental limitations I need to overcome? Yeah. yeah. And then ask if you overcome those mental limitations, will you win Wimbledon? If I overcome those mental limitations, will I win Wimbledon? Yes. Come on, Djokovic. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. So, so it's only yes, no answers. I can't say what is it. <laughs> no, but oh, you will find out. So again. <laughs> So we have techniques of belief coding that trigger responses and trigger memories and experiences and thoughts and feelings that show you what needs to heal to, that you can overcome to actually reach your desires and your goals. I just need to ask something else. Okay. Am, I, am I afraid of rejection? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, don't, so I'm going to ask you would, you, would you like a Wimbledon champion as your testimonial? <laughs> Do you know what? Honestly, I, I would love to say yes, but I, I know the exact facilitators to put you in contact with. This year, my focus is on growing. Yeah, do it then. But send, me, send, me, send, me, send me their details. I'll, I'll do it. Okay. We'll you know, do it online. So we have Jess Pittman, we have uh, Rachel, we have Tracy. We've got uh, quite a few of the facilitators online, but they're, they're incredible. So, so look, um, here's the thing. It's possible for me to win Wimbledon. I, I think I already 100% fully believe that it's possible to get my body to do that. I actually feel the fittest I've ever felt in my entire life. And um, I knew it was just going to be getting my mind in order. So here's the thing I did differently. All through my life, I always wanted to like get things for free. Um, you know, like just watch YouTube videos on how to play the guitar rather than playing 10 quid for lesson. Didn't get no coaching, didn't know, didn't get myself around business. Like I wanted to be like a businessman, but I didn't hang around with business people. I was just hanging around with people on a council estate. Like that's where I grew up. So the first thing I did differently for this Wimbledon thing is like, I've got to get a coach. That was my number one thing. The, then I've got to get around people who are playing tennis and I've got to so get in tournaments, sign up to the LTA, all of this stuff. So I've done all of that stuff. Yeah, so I'm 100% committed to I do believe it. it. I definitely think you can. I, I, I genuinely believe that you are going to win Wimbledon. Like, just because you drive it, because you're doing everything right. 
also as well i think um when you like as soon as you shift your beliefs and also i believe because you have that burning desire to do it and you've got that drive and there's something in you now which is making you just you have to do it it's it's, it's a need and when you have that energy and that passion coupled with the beliefs why wouldn't you win it you know why i one of the reasons i'm not sure if this is the main reason but definitely one of the reasons why i we, i want to do it is Number one, I want to like we already started building a documentary to just say, hey, like who says what size your goal should be? And then the other thing is when you start pursuing this goal and you find out all of the things involved in, in achieving it, the adversity just kicks most people out. So already I'm like, how can I even get into the top, you know, 1000, let alone 128 players that apply to get to women? Anyway, so then um, what I then was on the phone to a coach who this coach played at Wimbledon in the qualifiers. She only got to the qualifiers, we found. And, I, and I'm on the phone and I said, and my partner was sitting here and I said to her, the coach, I said, yeah, the prize money is two and a half million dollars for the winner. I said, I've already decided I, I want to give it to charity because she was saying she wants 10% of it. Yeah. So yeah. if you win, I want 10%. I said, I'm already decided on giving it to charity. So anyway, the phone call ended and then my partner said, she said, uh, we didn't discuss you were giving it to charity. I said, yeah, yeah, I want to give it to charity. They said, no, we need to invest it. And, and then I, the, the thought just came to me. I was like, I win Wimbledon next year. It will be a global sensation. I don't think we'll have to worry about two and a half million dollars. <laughs> Netflix will buy the documentary for 10 times that. <laughs> yeah. But and I do. That's I one do. of the reasons why it must happen. 100%. And also, so talking about working with spirit, I genuinely believe that spirit, God, the universe, whatever it is you believe in, will give you something that you have to act upon. And if you look at, I don't know, if you look at the first person that did the, that, the one minute mile, the two minute mile, I don't really know, the seven minute mile, whatever it was. <laughs> it was one minute mile, Jesus. No, no, you know, the seven minute mile. It was unachievable until somebody did it because they had to break the beliefs. And like, you know, you've got to look at success stories globally success stories happen all the time when they should not happen yeah. and the only thing that drives that success is the person's belief in themselves that this, thing but but uh, but how, this, 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 the environment that people are in is so key because i just want to tell you one thing you know in england the lta is the english you know tennis association whatever yeah and, and i was struggling to find a tournament because they focus only on kids you know, so like because the four minute mile, it's not one minute mile, the, the four, four minute, the four minute mile <laughs> was close, Mark. Yeah, is that you got to start playing at five, six, or seven to stand a chance. That's but the four, that belief. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the four yeah. minute mile. I don't believe that. I think at 35, I can do it. And you know what? If it takes yeah. me, if it takes me one year, it takes me two years, I want to be also invited to the level cup, which I just attended this, this year. I don't give myself in the next five years. Roger Federer, the best player of all time, retired at 40. That tells me I've got at least five years. <laughs> but also, no, but this is the thing, right? Again, if you look at conditioning and beliefs, like if you look at that football is a prime example, okay? So if you look at footballers, they're told that their shelf life is what, when they're 29, 30? But that's a belief. So when they, that belief seeps into their subconscious, guess what they start doing at 29? They start slowing down. They start missing those goals because they've got that belief. Whereas actually, you'll see 90 year old like there's 90 year old women that are doing better yoga than most 22 year olds. You know, there's people who are like in the 70s running faster than people who are 17 because it's all, it's how much you're driven and determined to have it. And actually, it, you can prime your body to be and to do anything, but it has to start with belief. And mm -hmm. generally, if you absorb the beliefs of other people, you never do the action. So also this belief got you. So you're going to put me in touch with this person, right? Yeah. The best. I've got some amazing person. There's some online now. Yeah. I, literally... I, want, I want the best person who, you know, whatever, like I'm sure whatever happens, is going to be the best person. Yeah. Give me, give me your top number 1% of people. I can't, honestly, there's too many. I've got incredible facilitators. Yeah. Like, literally, absolutely incredible but, one. But yeah, just, they need to bring the spirit. You know, one thing I actually, I just forgot to say, you know, cause you kept talking about spirit and all of that. The one thing I, I've been telling myself through this whole journey is I'm going to forget just the, not forget, not, you know, because it is the physical world, but like I really want to use this flow of spirit to assist me in this journey. 
So you just got to be open to it. That's all you have to do. To work with spirit, to be open to your guides working with you, the only thing you have to do is be open to it. And then they'll send you signs. It's that inner voice. And I think sometimes we can think that inner voice is us. Whereas once you once you really work with your guides and you work with spirit, you start to understand, okay, this is me, that's them. This is me, this is guidance. It yeah. becomes clear what is you and what is not you. This is my partner, look. So. Oh, hello. She, oh, said, you. she said you're so inspirational. Bye. Oh, thank you. <laughs> From here. I know you are, but I got this spot. So, I just realized when, when everything was inside, it was like delayed. But um, <laughs> yeah, oh, I, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, John Mackin, can you? So I missed and missed it, but it sounds like he's saying, Can you increase your life expectancy? Of course, you can. Because if you think about it, right? So, if you look at people who have lost their parents when they were younger, a lot of them absorb a belief of, you know, I'm going to die young or this is going to happen. And if we look at people, let's sorry, let me rewind it. Do you know that there's only 5% of diseases which are uh, hereditary? 95% of diseases are not hereditary. So I, don't when, of, I don't believe any of them are. No, but to be fair, I don't actually. I think no, I think some are, but again, I think that stems from like karma, past lives, and stuff like that. So generally, if you look at people or family lines that have like breast cancer, which is in the mom, the daughter, the sister, generally they have the same genetic makeup, but they have the same lifestyle. So and they have the same beliefs. So what happens? They fulfill out that belief, which create the same circumstance. So if you want to live longer, and if you code in, I'm going to live to 120, because you can live to 120, because there's other people that have lived to 120, you, your body will naturally start to do things differently. Like it'll start making you more aware of the food that you eat. It'll make you more aware of what you put into your body, the chemicals that you use on your body. Everything. I think I've limited myself. You know, now you've given me extra confidence because I, I think I've limited myself. I did set out a goal to live to 180. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that was to 100. Maybe I should up it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 180. I said, yeah, 180. I've got a lot to do in this lifetime Yeah, before I come back to something else. So, yes. uh, by the way, I just want to say, Jessica, you know, like, I'm absolutely in alignment with everything you're saying. You know, along this whole Game Changer episode, I just wanted to ask the questions that other people probably don't either have the awareness to ask or the courage to ask. And you answered them amazingly. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think we were all totally open here. You got some amazing people on here chiming in with the, the greatness of it all. Uh, too, just too many to read right now. Uh, yeah. I, I will go back and have a read of that. But um, yeah, just astonishing. Oh, I, I'm, go I'm going to win Wimbledon. It is the four minute mile. And uh, yeah, let's tell everyone and let's make it a global sensation to inspire people of what they can do. And I think Roger Federer has seen my YouTube channel and said, forget that, I'm going to retire now before next year. <laughs> I think you'll be right, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't get close enough to him yet, uh, at the weekend to ask him, but maybe one, maybe when he invite, when he's the captain of the of Team Europe at the Lever Cup. Let, let's do this right now. Let's record this. When he's the captain of the Lever Cup Europe team, Team Europe, and he brings me in as a wild card. But the yeah. thing is, why wouldn't you now not contact Roger Ferrer? I can't pronounce his name. But like, if so, if I was, uh, if I wanted to win Wimbledon, and I thought, right, who is the best person to coach me? Is it Roderick Federick? I can't pronounce his name. If I truly believe that, I would code in, he's going to coach me. And then my belief systems would make me hound him down until he agreed to coach me. That, Mark, is what you need to be doing. Well, that apparently, apparently Roger Federer's coach might be looking for a job. So maybe I'll contact there him. There you go, then. Why, why go to the coach when you go direct to the halls? You need to code in that Roger is going to bloody well coach you. And then Both you need to them. hound him until he coaches you. Yeah, that is cool. Let's do that. I'm going to add that to my list of objectives. I'm going to add that to my win. I'm going to put that up here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. well, thank, you. thank you so much for having me on. It's been a blast. Call Big Rog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's do it. Have you got his phone number by any chance? Anyone, anyone who's got his phone number, please comment on here. Send it to me. Ask for my details. We'll get it across. Make it a little bit easier. But if not, We'll find a way. So thank you so much. We do have our mastermind coming up in five minutes. So I want people to have a bit of time, um, you know, in between. 
But awesome. So I've got a couple of questions before we wrap this up, Jessica. But before I ask you those couple of questions, absolutely amazing. Thank you for coming on here. Uh, definitely got to do it again because there was just not enough time to discuss, or maybe that's just my belief system, uh, discuss all the greatness and all the wonderfulness. So good luck with the launch and everything. And uh, hopefully this helps contribute to uh, some of that as well. But I've got a couple of questions left for you. So number one is right now you have a microphone that is translating to every different language across the planet and everybody can hear you 30 seconds what's the message the message is you can be and achieve absolutely anything that you want to it has to start with the belief in yourself if you truly believe in yourself you can set yourself any goal and any intention and you will hit it hands down boom wasn't even that many seconds but we got it <laughs> Fantastic. So last question before we wrap this up. We have a saying in our community that you must do the right thing for the right reason. Now, why is that? I think for me, doing the right thing for the right reason is good karma. And everything, everything always, always, always comes back to you. And again, even when you're trying to manifest stuff, always say at the end of your manifestations, for the greatest good or not at all, because you do, not want some, you do not want to bring something in which is going to be detrimental to another soul. Because, again, that's that's karmic. Um, so always, always, always lead with intention, lead with integrity, and be authentic. And always do good and do no harm. Nice. We love it. That's worth another round of applause. <laughs> Fantastic. So I always ask, oh, hey, go good backhand there. Yeah, You're already starting to do it. You're already starting to believe. <laughs> they want those seeds, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so i want i would I'd, I'd be honored if we could add, add you to our reel so we've got a reel where i always ask people this question okay. yeah the whole you know you gotta do the right thing for the right reason yeah but i would also like you to just give the answer we have a little tagline that we say okay. yeah and, and seeing as you have also been a successful actress in your career as well yeah i, think, That's I, think, I wouldn't say successful it's just your belief sister jessica come You're on right yeah so so i think you'll be very good at remembering this line so the answer the line is because it's the only way to discover your true potential are you ready for me to ask you the question yeah <laughs> okay so we have this saying in our community that you gotta do the <laughs> you gotta do the right thing for the right reason now why is that because it's the only way to discover your full potential <laughs> take that thank you so much for coming on here it's been an absolute pleasure thank you for everyone listening watching or however it is that you're digesting this wonderful session of the real life game changers and remember this is what jessica said she said you've got to do the right thing for the right reason because it is the only way to discover your true potential Amazing. thank you everyone <laughs>